Hello and welcome to the Top Order Podcast, day nine of the Cricket World Cup. We had a bouncer barrage, we had Kane Williamson's return. We uh, have absolutely no idea about the selection of this New Zealand side. Daryl Mitchell scored a few runs, we've got injuries galore again. All coming up right after this. I think I got the swish right there, Raj. Had a bit of a... <laughs> Had a bit of a crack at, at trying to do the uh, the sound soundboard as well while I was uh, while I was having a go at the the intro. I've been up uh, all night. Got uh, went to bed for about an hour since uh, since this recording. Could sort of kept thinking, oh, I'm going to have a nap, and then uh, just kept getting sucked into to this black cap side. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to make it through this World Cup. It's day nine, and I've already <laughs> I've already done two all nighters. Uh, but what what are your initial thoughts? Uh, we New Zealand goes into this game or comes out of this game now with uh, with three wins from three. Uh, we've got, I think we've got 28 wickets uh, from our three games. We've only lost 10 uh, from these three games. Uh, we've got a great net run rate. It's all looking pretty rosy and you couldn't ask for much more from this side after, after three games of this tournament. Yeah, what a day to be alive, I guess. If you're going <laughs> to stay up all night and watch a game, uh, what a game to watch. And you know, I think a real commanding sort of resounding victory for the for the Black Caps. Uh, in, in real summary, I think that we bowled incredibly well uh, when, you know, some teams are getting smoked all around the park at the moment on a pitch that actually looked quite good to bat on, at least initially. Um, kept the runs in check and then uh, a real controlled chase, I felt, um, in, in our innings when, when we um, chased that down. So, yeah, um, really happy. Uh, selection is an interesting thing that we should talk about. But, um, no, I, I think that's a really, really uh, win and gives me a lot of confidence in how we are putting together our plans and strategies to win matches. Uh, what did you make of it? Uh, yeah, well, I sort of had, had mixed feelings. Why don't we start with the selection? The Were you surprised when you saw the team lineup? Because... I, th- I mean, my predictions for, for what New Zealand would do just kind of went completely out the window. We were all, and and it wasn't just us, everyone was kind of clamouring that it would be a, a spin, very much a spin-friendly wicket in Chennai, based on what we saw from Australia and, and India's match. New Zealand decided to go with, with Lockie Ferguson, uh, over, you know, keep Lockie Ferguson over Ish Sodi, and then made a pretty tough call, I think, to drop Will Young and keep Rutch and Ravindra at the top of the order, which is, again, something I thought they might not do, given we've, we've hardly really seen Mark Chapman in this tournament. Uh, and, and the easy decision would probably have been to, to drop him and push Rutchen back down to, to six or seven, where he's been playing uh, you know, earlier on in, in the last couple of series. Yeah, look, I do think that those selection decisions are connected. Uh, if if, you, if that makes sense, so I think if if they kept Will Young, they'd probably want to to have an extra spinner. But because they kept Ravinder in, they had that spin option. They could go with a pacer, and I, you know, Tim Southey probably would have been first or second name on the team sheet had he been fit. Uh, so they went with Ferguson, and this that's the look that they wanted to go with a little bit of extra pace. There was pace in the wicket as well, so it's not a bad call by the selectors to 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 have um, Lockie Ferguson unleashed on that that pitch, and he bowled really really well. Um, yeah, Mark Chapman, an interesting one. I've got a question back for you, actually. So do you think that Ruchin Ravindra has forced a change in thinking around our first 11? Like maybe only two weeks ago, our first 11 probably looks different to what they think it is now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I think there's no, no doubt about that at all. Um, spoiler alert, I was talking uh, to people, well, I was talking to Mike Kesson last night. That That interview will come out. Uh, for listeners, uh, probably on Monday afternoon, kind of just trying to look at, at little slots we can we can throw that in there. But um, you know, we were talking about uh, I asked I asked him really about Rutchen and and kind of whether that came out of the blue. And he sort of said that you know as soon as they left Finn Allen out of the squad, he thought that they must have decided that Rutchen was an option to open. You're always kind of looking to build your squad with you know options in in all the different areas and you can't have everyone kind of covered in your in your 15 man squad um but i don't think they would have been thinking you know uh, gary stead before the tournament said will young is our opener for this tournament and uh and he will be opening you know he didn't say he'll be opening for the whole tournament but he said you know will young is our opener so that to me i i assumed that he was going to be there for a little while but Ratchard's form has just dictated that and 
you know, I guess the, the decision, we did talk about it a little bit in, in um, some of the preview stuff. We did talk about the squad or the, the lineup for this game. They had a decision to make whether they shuffled a lot of things around and how, and how valuable they really thought Mark Chapman was as a finisher. And I think the selection tells you yeah. that they think he's quite important. Yeah. And so if that's going to be the case, the only decision to be made in the batting lineup was Rutchen or Will Young because Kane Williamson's a very, very good player and he had to come back in. Yeah, it's actually quite um, a different position for us as New Zealand fans uh, to be in, to have a real squad game that we can play. We send, mm. we send the best sort of lineup out for the, the, the opposition and the wicket that we're playing on a real horses for courses approach. We can we can play that confidently. Um, so I think it's, it's really awesome to, to, um, to, to have that ability. Um, just talk, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Trent Bolt. Uh, his ability to get wickets in his first spell or even first over is, is incredible, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, ha- I can't remember the stat, but yeah, he's definitely one of the leading wicket takers in that power play, you know, since the last Cricket World Cup. The uh, what did you did we even see that wicket uh, <laughs> happen the first ball yesterday that it sort of uh, flicked it away and then nobody kind of saw where the ball went and we all went oh okay cool that's out uh, so, <laughs> so that was that was a good start it was a good um, start I actually I, I missed the first ball unfortunately that's why I missed all the action but um, it's just incredible how he always manages to get. Well, not always, but a lot of the time, generally, he gets a wicket in that first over or first spell, and I guess that comes down a little bit to the you know the formats that he's playing these days and having to make an impact straight away. But it really, really helps um, helps any team out if their bowl- opening bowlers can take wicket. Well, look, I mean, in two hundred, that's two hundred ODIs mm-hmm. he brought up, uh, two hundred ODI wickets he brought up in yesterday's game. Remarkable achievement. He has it in, uh, I think, a hundred. Seven matches, uh, only Mitchell Stark in 102 matches and Sucklane Mushtaq in 104 matches uh, have done it quicker than him. So that just shows you the, the kind of bowler that Trent Bolt is in white ball cricket. I mean, he's a pretty good te- red ball uh, player as well. But yeah, it just shows you the kind of level that he's on in terms of what he's done for New Zealand. And very, They talked a lot yesterday about um, that knuckleball that he's developed. I think he said after the, the New Zealand innings that it's taken him two and a half years to to develop that, but he really seems to have it spot on. Picked up wickets with it the last couple of innings, and I mean, New Zealand's bowling. I, I mentioned before, taking twenty eight wickets from from three games. We've talked the whole way through this tournament about how important wickets are going to be, you know, through the middle stages, and and it showed again every time it seemed like partnerships were building. New Zealand managed to get one, and even that Mushfika Shakib partnership that that happened. They picked up the wicket at the key time. Lockie Ferguson gets Shakib, and I mean, you must have been delighted to see him bowling with some serious gas, bowling with some swing, which is something you know, and and some rhythm, which is something we I don't think we've seen for a while from Lockie. Yeah, and and that that's the key for me is that Lockie's not there to stop runs from being scored. He is there to make an impact and take wickets. Uh, especially that game was drifting a little bit uh, after after the first wicket, and he came in and he got a couple of big wickets. That Shanto wicket is is a bigger wicket um, than we think. You know, after we gave Shanto such a you know a big up, so well yeah. done for his performances so far this year. He's actually fallen off a little bit, so it's the top order curse for him. <laughs> but um, no, I was really impressed by Lockie's bowling. He bowled fast and he bowled aggressively, and he did his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was really good. I, th- I um yeah, as you say, it's just nice to see like he if he can be back at that form, back at the kind of level and wicket taking uh, sort of uh, strike power for us. Uh, you know, looking back at the 2019 World Cup, if he can kind of deliver that again, it really adds something something to this lineup because we've seen what Santner can do. Santner, Mitchell Santner, I think is leading the wicket taking uh, charts for for the whole tournament, um, and that's not even something we expect. Mm. I think he's actually bowled better in the England game and in uh, this game than he than he bowled in the the game where he got five for against the Netherlands. Yep. Um, but you know. Bolt, Henry, Santner, if we can add Ferguson to that, it's four bowlers that we can absolutely lock down and be really, really, uh, you know, really, really think that we're going to take, they're going to take wickets and they're going to restrict runs all the way through the innings. 
Well, I've actually got a question for you, actually, around our th 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 those bowlers have been great and they've been performing for a long time for us. But what about our spin trio? Is this the best spin trio in the tournament? The, <laughs> we're looking at Santana, Phillips, and Ravindra. Phillips, I, I uh, three games in, I did not see. Uh, you know, if you just said three games in, Glenn Phillips top top of the strike rates, I would certainly not have thought that it was top of the bowling <laughs> strike rates. It, uh, unbelievable. I don't, I don't know what's uh, yeah. He, I, I think they were saying in commentary that uh, I can't remember who it was 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 talking away and saying that they uh, they saw Glenn Phillips and and he was looking at the scorecards on the on the TV screens and it just had a bat by his uh, by his name and he was like where's the ball I'm I'm a I'm I'm a bowler as well so yeah look he's I mean look if he can come in and chip out a wicket every single game that's that's going to be crucial because yeah as as we've just said wickets are so key in this tournament and even if he's Oh, sorry, no, it's, actually, it's actually an interesting one because he is sort of going down the same track as a, as a Glenn Maxwell. And Baldy talked about it yesterday in terms of how important Glenn Maxwell's bowling, sorry, the day before, how important Glenn Maxwell's bowling would be, uh, depending on the look that they sent out against South Africa. Um, they'd kill for this, someone to be able to come in, bowl a couple of overs, bowl four or five overs maybe of spin, and then be able to close a game out with the bat uh, if required. Um, so he's fulfilling a, a great role. I am a little bit um, miffed that he can't uh, find a spot in the top five, but it's a hard top five to break into at the moment. But he's doing well with what he, uh, what he, the opportunities that he's been given. And, yeah, I might have to re rethink my stance on Glenn Phillips' bowling. It was it was one of the, the nightmare scenarios for me earlier, having Glenn Phillips have to bowl, and, but he's actually um, he's proven me wrong and he's doing a great job. Yeah, well he got it, he did get an opportunity to come in at five today, if, albeit for, for a very, very short time. Yeah, New Zealand they, they just did the job with the ball every, as we said, they, they every time it seemed like Bangladesh was going to get away, that Shakib and Mushvika partnership, they were able to pick up wickets. And you go into the break and you think 246 is a pretty easy target or, you know, yeah, pretty easy target. I think that was that was fair at the break. We kind of thought that that would happen. And, and uh, you know, when you look at the scorecard, that looks like it was an easy target. But, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, what, what, we, what did you see? How much have you seen of, of that New Zealand innings? So I caught the uh, the last... <clears throat> Excuse me. I caught the last hour of the, sorry, the first hour of the last two hours. Um, yeah. Things seemed to be traveling along, traveling along quite nicely there. Um, Mitchell and and Williamson just um, scoring runs at will, taking singles um, whenever they needed to, and then putting away the odd boundary. So, from what I saw, it, it looked really, really comfortable that chase and. You know, if, if we just focus on Williamson for a second, I think he paced that innings really, really well, uh, which we've seen a, n a number of other teams around the uh, around the trap struggle to pace their innings, whether that's setting a target or um, or chasing. But Williamson paced it really well. He had a slow start, but um, I think him along with Mitchell really controlled that chase. And the fact that we had different batsmen in the top four chasing this down, scoring runs is actually really, really encouraging for me. What What did you make of it? You might have a little bit of a different stance on it. Well, the first 10, 15 overs was tough work for New Zealand. Uh, you know, it was moving around, Mushvika and Shurifal, uh in particular. Uh, uh, Mushtafiza, sorry, I should say, and uh, and Shurifal were very, very good. They found a really nice line just outside off stump to both Ravindra and Conway, swinging it away. Then Ravindra goes and Williamson comes in and they really, really tied you know, Williamson and Conway got very, very tied down. We only scored 37 off the first 10 overs. Uh, and then, you know, really, really made it hard for New Zealand. Conway and Williamson both dropped at, at different points in that innings. Very, very tough chances, you know, slashing, slashing at the ball. Um, but yeah, they made it, they made it New Zealand work pretty hard. And I think, as you say, New Zealand or Kane Williamson, we sort of just... We sort of just expect it now from him that he paces in innings like that, but I, I, it's pretty remarkable that he's been out for uh, you know six months since he's had that uh, ACL injury, nine months since he's played a uh, an international game for New Zealand, I think, or or at least a, an ODI for New Zealand, and to come back in and and do that is is something pretty special, and because I think a lot of players, uh, him and Conway, a lot of players would have. 
been pretty frustrated with how it was going because Bangladesh were just giving them nothing to go with. And, uh, and they were able to say, look, we've only got 246 to chase, even though it was, it was quite nervy for me to sit there and watch with the ball flashing past the, the outside edge at, at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. But they were able to just go, look, we've got plenty to chase. If we keep wickets in hand, we're going to do this easy. And yeah, that, pro- that proved to be the case. Yeah, there was one shot I saw, I think it was off Tuscan, where Williamson just two-stepped down the wicket and, and put it for six over mid-wicket. It was one of the first shots I actually saw in that, and I was like, oh, this is great. Williamson's in amazing form. But the confidence to be able to go down and do that, even though he was a little bit scratchy in other areas of his batting, the confidence to go down and do that and make that look so easy, is it's just, he is, he is such a good batsman and definitely our best batsman at the moment. Yeah, he was he was trying to use his feet a lot. Tried to use his feet to the spinners, uh, you know, as you would have seen to Shakib came down coming down the wicket, trying to get down the wicket to Mahidi as well. So yeah, look, he he sort of he built into his innings, and it was a real shame then that obviously later on in the innings. I mean, they kept the commentators just kept uh, every time he'd take a quick run. It seemed like him and Daryl Mitchell were, were trying to make it as hard as possible for, for Kane's knee at, for a little while there. But yeah, yeah every time the, uh, you know, he would take a quick run, the commentators would focus on that knee. And then, uh, and then he gets hit in the hand and, and has to go off. I think people that are looking at the scorecard now might look at the retired hurt Kane Williamson and think, oh no, something's happened to the knee. But yeah, it was, it was a hit on the hand again. And, and we're looking at, at scans and uh, I think on his hand, tomorrow is is the report it would be you know absolutely uh, devastating for him if he's broken broken something in that hand after all the hard work that he's put in to to get into this tournament it would feel very very rough yeah and it's it's that top hand as well which is the one where you just can't bat if it's injured at all Uh, maybe if your bottom hand is injured you could you could still make it if it's a sprain or something like that some kind of impact injury or bruising but uh, that top hand, it's, it's really important. And it'll be interesting to see what the scans come out with. He was able to bat on. I'm not sure how long he batted on after that. Not for too long. Yeah, had a, had a couple of uh, hits and then played one shot and sort of signaled to the, signaled again to the uh, dressing room. Seemed like he, seemed like he didn't really want to go off. I think they still needed, uh, you know, 50, about 50, I think, when he, when he finally did decide. I think it was 200 for two when he walked off. But yeah, you know, took a run and then just sort of went nah, and kept walking off. So yeah, I, 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 it doesn't look great to be honest. Um, obviously, my predictions so far about a range of things, uh, you know, in this World Cup seem to go out of date very quickly. But yeah, we'll we'll be watching very very closely with uh, what happens there. And the the last thing for me before uh, kind of looking ahead for the teams, uh, your friend Daryl Mitchell, uh, should we call him the mailman? He delivers again. <laughs> Uh, stepped it up at the end as well there to ensure we got a little run rate boost. Uh, yep. He's just so dependable, isn't he? Wherever you put him in the lineup. Oh yeah, I mean, well, he he just sort of brings energy to the to the crease. It, I think that's the most impressive part. I mean, he had his luck today. He first, you know, Conway gets out. Daryl Mitchell first ball, uh, you know, two steps down the wicket, hits Shakib uh, over mid off, just. You know, Marmadula's catching it and falling over the boundary. So, you know, it, it, we lose a wicket there and it's 100 for three and suddenly Bangladesh would have been, you know, thinking they're right in with a sniff here because we'd been going, you know, reasonably slow up until that point. Um, but I think he earns his luck. He kind of earns every ounce of his luck because he's just trying to score all the time. He's trying to be positive. And, yeah, he, can, he kind of, the way he's able to hit boundaries when you really need one and, and manipulate the field when, when uh, you know, we know how strong he is down the ground, but he was able to find little sweeps. He's able to play that reverse. Yeah, very, very impressive stuff from him. And now that's that's two innings in a row where he's contributed. And yeah, I think, as you said before, it's, it's just great to see sort of everyone playing their part in this World Cup for New Zealand so far. Yeah, no, extremely exciting. On the, on the luck thing, I do believe they make their own luck. Uh, every, you know, everybody makes their own luck. And there was, as you mentioned, there were a few, I'm going to say less than half chances, you know, against the, the Williamson, Conway and, and Mitchell, that, that one you're talking about at the, at the beginning of his innings. But those mm-hmm. are the ones that, if executed by the fielding team, they change results. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, they fell our way today. 
um, and uh, we, we we sort of canted to the victory. So good all round. Yeah, very very uh, nice all round uh, three games. As I said at the start, you know, you couldn't really ask for much more of this team. Everyone's con- contributing. We've got a great net run rate. We've got three from three, and now we look to to this next game against Afghanistan. You know, hoping to make it four from four. Just before we leave this game and, and look ahead to, to tomorrow's game or tonight's game or wherever we are in this, this tournament, the pitch, well, we, we, are we surprised? I mean, I, I wasn't on for the, the call that you guys had about Australia, India. Everyone was talking about how much it was going to spin. And, and actually, this pitch, you know, like we said, Lockie Ferguson, the selectors made an, an, an incredibly uh, well-judged decision because I think they must have heard all of that noise about you know, this pitch being able to spin and, and do all of that. And they must have been thinking, Ish Sodi's going to come in. Lockie Ferguson plays, and it's just a bouncer fest. New Zealand bowled, I think, 50% of, over 50% of their balls were, were short. It paid off big time. You know, Lockie was picking up wickets that way. It, we're, you know, what do we make of, of how a pitch can change that quickly in, in a couple of days? And I don't know, are we expecting that that might happen throughout the tournament or, or do we sort of just have to expect the unexpected and, and take every day by by uh, on its merits? Yeah, look, um, I guess the easiest way for me to explain it is that India is a big place. The pictures around <laughs> India are all going to be different. Um, and it, it's interesting because uh, Binksy mentioned he was watching the 96 World Cup on his, his cricket channel in his, his hotel room. If you look at the the knowledge that the teams now have compared to back then when they were playing in Sri Lanka, the, the knowledge they have about India as a place and each individual ground that they're playing at, they don't fall for the for the sort of media speculation or, or the talking points about what the pitch does or has done previously. They they have the knowledge, the the experience of those wickets to actually go out there and go, okay, I know what this pitch is going to do, and mm. um, select accordingly. So. That, from a selection point of view, I'm really happy that they they went with what they thought from a gut perspective, and it paid off for them. From a, what we're going to expect for the rest of the tournament, I don't know. I think a lot of these tournament, a lot of these pitches, I've found they have a lot of pace up front. They're good for the new ball, and depending on which team is batting and how they deal with a ball getting older, it, it sort of dictates how they finish an innings off. But um, I think that they will get slower and lower. I just think that's just a, a, a you know, it's going to develop into that. But um, it is interesting to see a pitch that is in India that is, um, you know, conducive to the fast bowling. Yeah, and uh, and moving, I guess, to, to uh, the India-Pakistan game, which, you know, I, I don't think there's going to be a bigger hyped game in this tournament unless the two of them meet again in a knockout game or, or you know maybe if India's in the final it might be uh, as hyped but you know I think uh, back to uh, the first game that uh, when Sachin Tendulkar jumped into the commentary box with uh, for the New Zealand England game and, and he was talking about how uh, I think in 2011 it was when uh, India played Pakistan in the World Cup and, and he said that the fixtures came out you know nine months a year before that tournament and he had friends messaging him immediately saying, you, you know, you've got to, you've got to beat Pakistan. And, and mm. uh, it was just built up for that long. There's, it seems like there's a big concert organized. They've got all sorts of entertainment, uh, but it's, but they said on the commentary today that it seemed that the, the pitch, as we were talking about before is a, a black soil pitch. Not that I know anything about that, but apparently that means that uh, it's not going to spin as much as the, the red soil pitches over in India. So they're expecting it to be, good for batting. Uh, do you think we're going to get the blockbuster uh, on the field that, that we're uh, talking about off it? Look, I have got no idea. I thought this whole, <laughs> whole World Cup was going to be a, a 200, 250 World Cup, but it's turned into much, much more than that. And I've had to eat my hat based on that point. Um, <laughs> I just think it's going to be a great spectacle. No matter what happens in that game, it's it's like watching a, you know, a finals game in the NBA or any other sport. It is definitely that sort of caliber game. It doesn't matter how many runs are scored, how many wickets are taken. It's going to be pretty um pretty tense I feel and it's it's going to be interesting to see how the players respond to that. Pakistan it's their first real real sort of test um against one of the um probably playoff contenders. Maybe I'm being a bit rude to Sri Lanka and the Netherlands there, but um, it is uh, it is uh, their first sort of test. It'll be interesting to see how they play this game and, and what 
what impacts that has because they've they have Australia next. So you'd want mm. them to have a little bit of confidence going into that game. That could turn out to be a very pivotal game in the overall context of the the World Cup. But I, I think it's going to be a spectacle. India Pakistan in India in a big tournament. I think you should tune in. Tune in just after the election nights, Stu, and um, you'll be able to to watch that. Yeah, big couple of days here in New Zealand for 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 all sorts of of different reasons. That's a pretty good way to to end the podcast, I think. Yeah, all, you know, I think everyone will be tuning in around the world to, to that game. Hopefully, we get an absolute cracker because uh, yeah, we, we haven't seen many close games throughout this tournament, and and uh, yeah, we're really hanging out for. A, for a really close one, and, and as you say, two teams that really could, uh, you know, th- this next couple of games, when these teams have to play each other, that's going to decide um, or play a, a pretty big role in, in deciding who makes these semifinals. So, yeah, all all there for you. Uh, thanks very much for joining us again on, on these daily wrap-ups. As I mentioned, uh, you know, earlier in the podcast, we've got an, an interview with Mike Kesson, uh, about a 45-minute chat with him talking about World Cups and, and uh, the 2015 World Cup, Grant Tally at six, and, and a few other things to do with the IPL. So really interesting chat. Absolutely love talking to him. So that'll probably come out on Monday afternoon. So look out for that as well. Um, but yes, yeah, stick with us during this World Cup uh, and enjoy your day. We'll see you again tomorrow.